You're watching Taste of Victory. Hey everybody, welcome back to Taste of Victory and today we have a very special guest. I am joined today by famous Yu-Gi-Oh! Tuber, MBT, the legend himself. MBT, you want to go ahead and say hi, give yourself a small introduction? Hey, uh, my name is MBT. You may have seen me on Line. I have a YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash MBT Yu-Gi-Oh! Twitch channel at the same link, but with Twitch in it. And um, I'm also around uh, on uh, channels like uh, CMOs. I do History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, but one thing I'm not particularly well practiced in is Digimon. Uh, I just don't really have time for it. And as a result, I, I think I am about to get absolutely destroyed in uh in in today's fun little video yes sir and that is why we are here today to see how much he could use his general card game knowledge to guess the power level of digimon cards and maybe learn a little bit of something along the way so i guess without dragging this out further ado let's go ahead and get right into it so digimon is a really unique game and that it has the memory uh gauge system where you kind of your plays affect how much your opponent will be able to play next turn you have security which is made of five cards of your deck which is basically your life so that's the basics that we know going in and mbt will have to guess the rest from his general card game knowledge i do have to disclose i have played two or three games of Digimon, so I'm pretty much an expert. I think I'm going to I think you're better this. than our Nationals level players at that rate. Oh god, already I am lost. So yeah, this is Boring Storm, our first card up. So cards uh, have color requirements. This is a blue one. You have the memory cost going along with the memory gauge I was explaining earlier. This is a one cost card. Pretty cheap, right? Then its main effect is trigger draw one. Every card will have a security effect, which means if it gets stuck in your health row, you know, basically your security, um, it'll play that effect out when it's revealed on the, an attack, which in this case is trigger draw two. So all this in mind, MBT, do you think this is a good card, bad card, mediocre card in the Digimon TCG? Okay, the security effect is kind of crazy. It's hard to tell like how good drawing is because don't you draw every time you Digivolve as well? That's correct. Every time you Digivolve, it's a free draw. So as much as I want to compare this to something like Upstart Goblin, it seems like way worse. It seems like you'd be spending a card to do something that literally any Digivolution card can accomplish. Um, I guess maybe if there is like a Storm style deck, it could be crazy, but I think that this card is not very good. Okay, and that is your final answer. Final answer, yes. All right, well then you may not be surprised to find out that you're right. This card is not huh. very good. Because of the memory system and the Digivolution requirements like you were saying, the typical turn in Digimon will be three memory because that's what a lot of the tamers in this game set you to. Tamers are basically like continuous spell cards. Uh, they set you at three guaranteed memory. So this is already taking up one third of your potential actions per turn. And then like you said, mm -hmm. you already draw for Digivolution. So it seems like you got that basic mechanic down. And then there's also the worry about, for a lot of decks, you, like, it's so different from Yu-Gi-Oh! You draw so much that there is a genuine worry of self-deck out, and cards like Boring Storm can lead to that. Okay. All right, so sounds, sounds like we're already one for one, that Yu-Gi-Oh! is helping you out. I will say, Upstart Goblin made this one a little more difficult. Right, it's so, it's a complete whiplash to go from, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! to Pokemon or Digimon. They both draw so much. Upstart, the cost for it is so negligible in Yu-Gi-Oh, while the cost here is actually pretty huge. One memory can make a huge difference. This time with a Digimon. So this is Magna Angemon. It's one of the popular Digimon from the OG season. 6,000 DP, which is basically the attack points in Yu-Gi-Oh. Every card when we get to Digimon has a play cost, which means like you could hard slam it on the field, just like that for the full cost. Or you could Digivolve over the required level here, which is a uh, level four in this case. Its effect is on play trigger recovery plus one to deck, which means you're basically recovering one health from your deck. And then you have these inheritable effects that go live once they are underneath a Digimon, like something has Digivolved over them. In this case, you just get plus 1000 DP for every three security you have. So all this in mind, how do you judge this card? Oh, this one's rough. So uh, I know that Digimon cap out at like level six. Uh, I Maybe there's some sevens. I don't actually know. Um, but... In order to get the inherited, you would have to rank up from this, which seems like a lot. Uh, the on play effect is kind of crazy. Man, but but in the few games that I've played, uh, it's never been like a super close race for security. It's more like one person starts walking away with it and then snowballs into a victory. So, hmm. 
man, it's rough. As a stepping stone to a really powerful uh, level six, this seems like a great card. But I just don't know if one of those exists, and if it does, if it's worth making this. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say that this card, I wanna say this card is good. And actually you would be pleased to find out that is very correct. So if you look oh. down here, uh, uh, you get the card set and number. So this is BT1. Mm -hmm. This card was printed in the very first set of the game ever. And it is to this day still seeing competitive use because it is wow. an insane card. Yeah. So this is basically recovery with the body. There are decks like mm -hmm. uh, Megazoo or Security Control, uh, where their entire game plan is recovering up your health to outlast your opponent. So they mm -hmm. run expensive options just to recover. Like there's one that gives you a free security, no condition, but it costs six memory. Um, so this is that, but with a body for only one more. So the ability to recover and then poke is huge. Recently, it's kind of fallen off because a lot of decks have sped up, but uh, there are decks like Mastamon that keep it relevant through archetype support. So it's like if Gishki suddenly got support that was busted and brought it back into relevance. Oh yeah, that uh, that's a pretty uh, fun hypothetical that is definitely not about to happen. <laughs> go ahead and go back to options for a second now. So removal is always a pretty huge thing. There's lots of protection against it in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, but let's see how that works in Digimon. We have Gaia Force here. This is eight memory. Each player has a max of 10 they can get on their turn. So this is costing eight. And the main effect is simply just delete one of your opponent's Digimon in security. It does the same thing for free. So all that considered, is this a poo poo card or good card? Eight is so much. Oh my God, it's an unbelievable amount. So I don't know if you saw um, the, the deck that I was playing uh, when I played a little bit of Digimon. Um, was the one that plays a lot of seven cost cards. Oh, uh, Bealstar. Um, Bealstar, yeah. Uh, that have similar effects like this. You know, they have uh, their powerful options with a security effect that's just like fire it. Um, this reminds me of one of those, and those were good, except the cost for the other ones was fine because there were ways to like trash it or get around paying it. I mean, if you ever have to pay that eight, I imagine it's terrible. I'm going to say that despite its security effect being really good, I think this card is probably not great. So really, you are technically well, right. <laughs> technically. <laughs> uh, but the really interesting thing about Gaia Force is that this is really the blueprint for all removal in the game. Like every relevant um, spell removal has been eight cost as well. Uh, there is Wyvern's Breath. There is uh, Chaos Degradation. The thing with that is, is that protection just became way more common. So this card mm -hmm. just sees less and less use every format. Oh, they just say like this card or this can't be deleted by XYZ. Yeah, a lot of Digimon now have effects like can't be deleted by, you know, a destruction uh, by a card effect or something like that. So you have to either battle over them or like bounce them, stuff like that. Like you were, you were hinting towards it too, the security effect. That has kept this card really relevant for a, probably a lot longer than it needed to. Cause like security control, mm -hmm. as mentioned earlier, it's a deck that kind of just, um, relies a lot on your security messing them up when they swing into it and you just outpace them. So this would be tossed in a lot of red and yellow decks just to have good options to show up in your um, security. So it's weird because in this game you could destroy it through um, game mechanics if you set their DP to mm -hmm. zero because you can like DP minus, which is different from them. Um, it's like minusing their attack points, except it actually would delete them to oh, zero. It's, it's like uh, minus X minus X in magic. Okay, yeah, it's like that. I, I don't know anything about magic, so maybe I could do a... Digimon player rates magic video someday. So next card, we're going back into uh, Digimon here. So we got a uh, level six Digimon here. I think it's the first level six we're seeing too. Pretty big DP count, 13,000. Uh, its effects are when Digivolving, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon, then gain one memory for each of your opponents, suspend a Digimon. Opponent's turn, all of your opponent's Digimon gain your turn. You must trash one card in your hand to unsuspend this Digimon. So, and that is a five cost Digivolution. So it's kind of a lot going on in this card compared to some of the other Digimon we saw that were just like one line of text. Yeah, this is a hard one. Uh, okay, so insane play cost that you will never fire because you don't get the killer uh, Digivolution effect. Wow. It's, ugh. I mean, coming from Yu-Gi-Oh, it just reads like this incredibly powerful floodgate. Almost feels kind of like a lose one turn. Um or like Baguska or something. Uh, but it does give your opponent the ability to get out of it. Hmm. Can you attack suspended Digimon? Suspended Digimon, yes. They have to be suspended to attack over them. Um, unsuspended can't be attacked. 
So it makes me feel like not only is this some sort of huge floodgate to keep your opponent's hand size low, theoretically, if you have like a big board that you have to contest, you could fire this to force all your opponent's Digimon into suspension and then just like clean up with your own guys. Ugh. Yeah, this card seems pretty good. I'm going to say that it's a good card. Um, and that's before even getting into, like, it can reduce its, its expensive five-cost Digivolution, so, like, it reads really insane. But uh, maybe you'll be surprised to find out that this card is actually utter garbage. This is... <laughs> no! This is a trash card oh, that never sees play. No. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I, this is this is one of the things I was like... I might be overvaluing cards in hand, and I guess that I was. I guess not. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where it really trips up a lot of players is uh, hand size. Because mm -hmm. in Digimon, like we said earlier, you draw for Digivolution, but there's also a lot of like, when attacking, draw one. When Digivolving, go ahead and draw another two. You know, make yourself a Sunday. Um, sure, yeah. Because of that, your hand size in this game get really huge. Like I commonly have games where I have 12 or 14 cards in hand in uh, the current meta. So like if you have, usually you're gonna have like two to three Digimon on field. With a hand that big, you do not care about discarding three extra cards in your hand and just getting past its floodgate like effect to unsuspend your guys uh, mm -hmm. because of that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember when we were making this list, I was uh, thinking of Topologic, was it Gumblar Dragon? I think was the card that I kept comparing oh, this God. in my mind. Like that thing was ridiculous, leaving you with one or zero cards in hand. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we go to Greymon. Is, is this one of the recognizable guys for you? Cause it's like one of the icon, this is like their Charizard basically the whole Greymon line. Yeah, I was going to say, if this card isn't good, it is a huge mistake on the part of the Digimon devs. <laughs> yeah, they, they would have to go back into R&D for the game in that case. So this is um, just a champion. No main effect, as you can see. Uh, 4,000 DP, but he does have an inheritable, which is just security attack plus one, letting you do one extra damage when you swing into security. So it looks pretty simple. Uh, does that make it bad, or would that make it good? Uh, it, it's so hard evaluating, like, mid-level Digimon, right? Because, like, the high end, it's like, oh, this card's crazy. It does a million things. And the low end, it's like, this card's so aggressively statted. But in my experience, the L4 guys are, like, pretty much all Digivolve to 2 with an Inheritable. And S Ooh, Security Attack plus 1 is a pretty good one. Um, uh, I'm going to say this card's good. It seems decent. decent. Okay, cool. I like that guess because you are right. This, is, like Magna Angemon, has been seeing play since the very beginning of the game to this day. Uh, cause, cause it's such a simple effect. So like literally no other card has come along that does this job better because there are other cards that give security attack plus one, but they're all conditional. Mm -hmm. Like if you're level seven, gain security attack plus one. Um, if it's two o'clock on a Monday afternoon, gain security attack plus one. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> this guy just does it. That's all his effect is just gain security attack plus one. And the fact that he's lower level, um, uh, makes, makes it easier to put it underneath any threatening mega level Digimon level six and up. Because, like, that's a balancing tool. Like, sometimes they'll put it on a um, level 6 itself, the security attack plus 1, so you can't mix it with something else that's already broken. So this could potentially lead to that. And then it's Greymon. Like we alluded earlier, it's the Charizard of the game. So there's constant archetype support that keeps this thing relevant for years. It's kind of funny. In Yu-Gi-Oh, we have, like, our equivalent to cover cards are, like, Blue Eyes and Dark Magician. Boy, and they just get support every other set, and they are just terrible. Just unplayably bad. They can't make an archetype to save their life, with the exception of, I think, 2016 Blue Eyes was the most pushed stuff ever. That's great, Juan. That's the poster boy. Good to see that he has good representation. So now let's let's, get, let's up the ante a bit. Let's get some Yu-Gi-Oh! size <laughs> text on these cards now. Okay. All right, so... Getting into the hard rounds. This is Hexablaumon. So oh my god, and the, and the text is all caps. It's really Hexablaumon. <laughs> it's really Hex. It wants you to know it's Hexablaumon. He is a threatening force. This guy is a mega level Digimon, so now we're getting, kind of starting to see the power level of these things. Um, it's only 11,000 DP, 3 to Digivolve. So its main effects are um, when attacking, trash the bottom two Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon. And then uh, if your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution cards, this Digimon gains jamming, which means it, if it hits a Digimon in security, it can't be deleted by battle. So you're not worried about big 15,000 DP guys in security. Then he has another effect, which is all turns. All of your opponent's Digimon without a Digivolution card underneath them can't attack or block. So this guy does quite a bit of a lot for a level six. Seeing all that text, what do you think of him? I mean, I may be completely off base here, but it looks like a trick. Um, trash the bottom two Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon, then potentially gain jamming is cool, but jamming's not that crazy. It seems like you're just like 
improving the chance of not dying in battle on a Digimon that has 11,000 DP. Like, I didn't think this guy was usually going to be deleted in battles against security Digimon frequently anyway. Uh, this Floodgate effect, that's like if your opponent's Digimon don't have a Digivolution card, they can't attack or block. That seems relevant and decent, uh, but in my experience, I mean, you are constantly Digivolving, so I don't think that's going to come up as much as it would need to to make a six payoff worth this. The cost on this guy is super aggressive. The, like, three off of five is, like, really, really low, but... Even with that, I feel like this card is actually not very good. Okay, uh, I like the intuitive guess there, because this was actually put on here as like one of the main bait. Oh, all right. So yeah, you are right. This card is not very good. Uh, it was actually a very hyped up card, because a lot of people just saw it. Really? Like, uh, yeah. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh players would never fall for something like this four or five times a set. <laughs> Every couple of years, quarterly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's everyone's no materials doing, by the way? Uh, did y'all make your money back on Ghost Mourner? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, but um, it flopped. It, it saw like one, I think, top eight top ever in the UK. And ever since then, it has never reached the top tables again. Um, hmm. Because, yeah, it was a lot of hyped up. Because it has a potential to be an entire board stun, you know, and not just like to prevent attacking, but also blocking, which can get you on game. Mm -hmm. But like you were uh, suggesting, the very mechanics of the game counter this. Like, I don't, I'm not worried about this. I could did you have all the way up to level seven, so there's almost always going to be a uh, level I could climb up, and that's it. All you gotta do is digivolve once, and I've played around your floodgate. And then, like you were saying, jamming on a level six is a uh, niche at best, because like you're already pretty big deep. It's pretty easy to play around, and once you do play around it, this card is basically as good as a vanilla, because you're climbing up to a level six to just trash the bottom two sources of your opponent's Digimon. If they have anything with, with sources on the field, that's all this guy can do. So, yeah, this thing is really not impactful enough uh, for a level 6. So it It's actually really funny that this thing only gains jamming conditionally, too. I mean, like, I feel like if it just got jamming anyway, it'd be just as playable. But Okay, so we got another level 4 Digimon here. Uh, level 4 is definitely, like you said earlier. So this is Lobomon. He's 5,000 DP, 2 to Digivolve over level 3, like a lot of other level 4 Digimon. Uh, you may digivolve this card from your hand onto one of your blue tamers as if the tamer is a level 3 Digimon. And I think I mentioned it before, tamers are basically just like a continuous field spell, more or less. And this lets you, that's its only effect, it lets you digivolve over them. Uh, this is part of an archetype called hybrids, where that's kind of like the gimmick of them. Uh, seeing that that's the only thing this guy does and no other effects, how do you feel about this card? Yeah, this card's crazy, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know, you gotta tell me. Uh, he seems nuts. Seems great. It seems really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess there's no hiding this one from anybody because this the whole um, hybrid idea in general is absolutely insane. This card got hit on the ban list really aggressively once. Not this card specifically, but like its archetype. And Concept, it got, yeah. Yeah, it, it got hit one time and it was still topping majority tournaments. Like, okay, we got to hit it again because being able to digivolve a tamer, it, like skip your rookie, um, is just so insane. Because your tamers already have on play effects, and then some of them guarantee you three memory. So, like, heart slamming them is already giving you value. Now you digivolve over them for cheap, giving you even more value to cheat out levels. It, it basically adds additional rookies to your deck so you don't brick. Um, and then also, like, there is very little tamer interaction in the game. There's few ways to delete them. So, like, if you're at zero security and you know your opponent um, has a tamer out, you're kind of molding sometimes. It's like, I can't do anything. You have hybrid in hand. You're going to kill me next turn. And the card literally doesn't do anything. Right. He himself does nothing. Just being able to go over a tamer is what's so huge. Let's go ahead and look at some oh. other cards in their archetype. So this one, I think to be fair, I'm giving a bit more context. So I'm showing uh, the level 6 Digimon of the, you know, the boss of the deck uh, along with its tamer. So excuse all the text, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is fine since Yu-Gi-Oh players have experience with a lot of text. For the Digivolve, 12,000 DP, um, Magna Garuma has one Digivolve, one attacking, once per turn. You may return one card with hybrid in his traits for this Digimon sources to your hand to return one of your opponent's Digimon of that same level to their hand. Then he also has the effect, when an effect adds a card to your hand, you may suspend one of your Digimon. And then we have the Tamer here, uh, security, he plays himself for free, and he basically lets you do something that's called a Warp Digivolution, which basically just lets you skip levels. Uh, you may place five cards with hybrid in their traits from their hand underneath this Tamer in order to let this card Digivolve into Magna Garurumon in your hand for its Digivolution cost. And he has an inheritable effect too. When an effect adds a card to your hand, gain one memory, then this Digimon can't be blocked for the turn. So... Oh, wow. So this might be throwing a lot at you right now. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. But uh, okay. what do you think so, about these? 
Well, first, uh, Magna Garumon strikes me as a card that if you get out, you just win immediately. Uh, the other level six Digimon we looked at, I was like, oh, you know, you can still play the game. But mm -hmm. this is uh, ounce an opponent's Digimon with the same level as a card in your hand, which mm -hmm. is crazy. Uh, unsuspends once, so it can potentially security like make a security run twice, right? Yeah. Uh, and then the inherited effect is every time you draw a card, you gain a memory, uh, or is drawing different than adding? Um, I don't believe so, because that would be this needs to be by an effect, so that shouldn't work. But like oh, when you do his bounce sure. effect, that itself will work. His bounce effect. Oh, That's wow. a hard one. Uh, <laughs> so, at minimum, you can. Oh my god! Wait, so the Magna Garumon effect triggers on Digivolution, but also every time it attacks? Yes, so. Only once per turn? Yep, yeah, once per turn, but you can do it every turn when you attack. Oh man. And the Tamer doesn't necessarily have to have five hybrid cards with, like, a certain a level, right? It's just any five hybrids. Yep, it's any five hybrids. And if you have two Magna Garumons in hand, you can put one of him underneath them too. Right. All right, so this strikes me as insane. Okay, this is like absolutely crazy blowing your mind right now. It looks really, really good. <laughs> Don't sit down because you're just going to stand right back up. This boss monster just rarely ever sees play in its archetype. Um, both of these cards, they almost never see play. <laughs> Yes. They're oh. too slow. These are too slow. <laughs> That's the insane thing. Oh my thing. gosh. Yes. I, wow. I mean, I guess it is a slower card. You have to be in a position where you've got five cards at hand, but mm -hmm. wow, it just seems to me that <laughs> it, it wouldn't be. I wouldn't imagine it is that fast. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, but that's that's the crazy thing, that being able to digivolve over your tamers is just way too efficient. Uh, blue hybrids are about mm -hmm. uh, high aggressiveness at the low level. Like, their boss monster is basically a level 5, more or less, and that level 5 mm -hmm. is really good. And then also, um, you could skip the levels, you know, with Koji's effect, but, like, that's 5 cards in hand. Uh, like, I know we said we draw so much in this game earlier, but, like, 5 of a specific archetype in your hand is a really huge asking price compared to just discarding one card for that Iban Wuman we saw earlier. Most of the times, you're also, you're not worried about removal, you know, because this what this deck does, it uses efficient level 4s and level 5s to stun your opponent's board. Uh, it's basically way better Hexablaumon, so you don't really care about removing them because they can't block anyway since they're stunned. So this, these crazy cards, they're actually kind of redundant. <laughs> That's so funny. I I mean, I get it. I, I understand it. it. It is like, well, if it's playing lower to the ground, there's no need to do this ridiculous bullshit. I just thought it would be good enough. I don't know. <laughs> it's totally fair because at the beginning of a meta, um, we also thought this. Like A lot of people were trying to make this card work because it's like, hey, it's non-destruction removal. This is insane. And it's like, well, I guess I don't need that. <laughs> there's nothing on board that's a floodgate or anything too commonly in this game uh, that you can't just mm -hmm. bounce faster earlier. So yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. These guys don't see too much play. This is Mega Digimon Fusion. Um, it has I actually know this one. Okay, this you're familiar with this one. To hell, right? Nice. Yeah. yeah, I think everyone knows about this card. It's needs... one of those that, like, the this first needs... time you read it, you go, oh, no way. Absolutely. Like, oh, this is going to be a problem someday. I just know it. Yeah, this is a fun trivia about it. This is the main reason to put it on the list. This is the only banned card in the entire game. The so only funny. one. Everything else has been put to one. Okay, oh. so we're, we're nearing this the end here. A guy. I, I know this guy. Oh, you he recognize him. around. You've seen him at it's Locals? Like a... Yeah, no, I, he's a, he's a, uh, he's like from the show. I mean, they're all from the show, but like <laughs> this was one of the cover characters, right? That's right. Yeah. Gururumon. He's basically like okay. the Vegeta to Greymon's Goku. Yeah. Okay. So that might give away an idea <laughs> of its power level. Uh, or maybe not because the like, cover cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! are pretty bad. Or famous oh, anime well. cover <laughs> So it's 8,000 DP, uh, 3 to Digivolve over level 4. Uh, he also has a special Digivolution condition where you can Digivolve zero from any card with, uh, called Wergaruman. Specifically Wergaruman, not Wergaruman in its name. Uh, he has when Digivolving, unsuspend this Digimon. Then if Wergaruman or X Antibody is in this Digimon's sources, return one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon to its owner's hand. And he has no inherit effect. So that is the card. How do you rate it? Okay, so if I'm reading this right, 
uh, you can send any where Groomon into security, then slap this guy on for free, unsuspend him, go again, and bounce an opponent's Digimon. Yes, so that requires the X-Antibody option to be in sources, but that is one of the main plays you do with this um, card, yeah. This card seems crazy. This card seems extremely good. Yeah, this card is destroying our meta right now. This is one of the this oh, is the great. best deck. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, and this is the card we're all whining. Is this like your Mystic Mine or, or is it more no. like your um, your uh, like curious? This is probably closer to curious. Our Mystic Mine would be Security Control. People would really hate that grindy oh, matchup. <laughs> because a deck as a strategy. Uh, well, I guess more as a strategy, because security control is just like, I'm going to annoy the heck out of my opponents every time they swing into security because they lose everything they built to every time. Sick. <laughs> but this is uh, this is just like OTK. This is like aggression to the max. Um, so this does rely on the rest of its deck. Um, there's a promo where Garurumon that gives a security attack plus one. Uh, the X antibody option that's mentioned here is what lets you attack and then Digivolve into this guy. I can't do that on its own. Um, and then it has battle protection, so you're not even worried about dying to DP. It has like pseudo jamming, because um, there's a Garurumon X that gives it an effect like that, where you trash two sources if you would die to protect it. So um, all that combined, like you just get to swing unsuspend, swing unsuspend so many times. It's so fast and it's fairly consistent that it's like the best deck with the most representation in tops right now, I believe. Wow. Yeah. Uh... Wild, but good on them for making all the crazy cards, the famous ones. Yeah, the ones people are probably going to want to buy. I am so sorry, Dark Magician and Blue Ice players. Okay, so we're nearing the Aww. end here. I do believe this is the last one. So this is the face of Mercy. I love him so much. He's really cute. This is an egg. This is the first egg we've gotten to. I wanted to show off um, every card type that is in the game. Uh, so there's a breeding area. Right. You hatch an egg. It's, it's protected from any effects at all. Uh, he has the Inheritable. When attacking once per turn, if your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution cards in play, trigger draw one. So, just being an innocent little egg, what do you think of that effect? It seems great. I know that the uh, the uh, kind of bar for eggs is pretty low. Um, I I'm playing some in the deck that I like threw together and took to a local ones that just don't do anything. And it's fine. Uh, <laughs> this one seems like it has an effect that frequently goes off, which makes it infinitely better than most other eggs. Totally agree with you there. And you're completely right. This is uh, largely considered one of the best generic eggs in the game. Because, <laughs> like, blue... Sure. Yeah, like, one of the best we put on here. Because um, blue's entire playstyle, like, a lot of it will just, like, um, nonchalantly remove sources. This is a very easy condition to meet to get a free draw one. And there's no drawbacks to it. You just have to hatch your egg. Uh, well, I'm happy to hear that the cutest little boy is also the best egg. They need some uh, representation too. So, <laughs> you made it through the Gauntlet MVT, and honestly, you did a pretty good job of judging uh, a lot of these cards. The only ones that really tripped you up were like, honestly, the purposely pretty hard ones, like the Magna Garurumon. That, that one was pretty great. Uh, but like, do you feel like you have a better understanding of the game now, or are you just like, I understand less now? Ah, uh, man, I, I don't know. Um, Digimon is, as you mentioned at the beginning, it's just so different than almost every other card game. Um, I feel like so many card games are just living in the shadow of Magic the Gathering uh, and, like, use the same sort of mana system to a degree, you know, like, uh, use the same turn system, the same draw system. Uh, and to me, Digimon feels like what could have been the blueprint for every other card game if Magic was never made. And so it makes evaluating these cards really, really difficult. Um, and even, you know, uh, when people hand me a deck and they're like, oh, okay, so this card's good. Sometimes I read it and I'm like, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But um, I think there are different, like, I think if you, if you do kind of change your perspective about what is good and what is bad in here, it, it does help a lot. Um, I still can't believe the hand control guy sucked. That's unbelievable. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe I was so wrong about that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insane. Like people tried to make it work at the beginning too and he just doesn't do anything. They have to give up on him. It's pretty crazy, yeah. Sure. Yeah, and I totally agree that's with you. That's what, that's what really drew me to this game. Like I love how you, the memory system is literally nothing I've ever seen in a card game before. It's incredible. Oh, it's so cool. It's it. just unbelievably interesting. Yeah, I, I love what a breath of fresh air is instead of trying to copy something else. Yeah, this is awesome. I had a lot of fun filming this. Thank you so much for like coming on and even giving me this opportunity to do this with the other team. This was so Thanks great. Thanks for having me. This was really sick. I'm glad you had a good time too. This is really cool if you ever want to do it again. There's tons of weird, goofy cards we could choose for you. <laughs> Sounds good.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much too. Uh, we'll see you guys then. And until then, remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory.